Hey, welcome to the first of our uh, WebRTC updates. Uh, coming to you today from uh, beautiful Stockholm. Uh, we're going to try and do these at least once a quarter to make sure uh, developers, wherever you are, uh, can get a chance to hear the latest from the WebRTC team. Um, I'm here with Justin Uberti, who is tech lead for the WebRTC project, and Serge LaChapelle, who is product manager for WebRTC. Uh, my name is Sam Dutton. I'm a developer advocate uh, for Google Chrome. Uh, and before we start, I just wanted to uh, shameless uh, promotion really for our new home for sample code, which is now on GitHub, uh, the URL just on the video now. Um, we've, we've moved WebRTC, HTML, CSS, JavaScript samples to GitHub to make them easier uh, for you to write uh, patches, make issues, uh, any feature requests and contribute new content. Um, and it also makes it easier to, to view the demos, um, there's a URL for that now. Um, so we'll be adding some, uh, some new demos um, considering stuff uh, in relation to testing stun and turn servers. Um, also some work on AppRTC, uh, our uh, video chat demo. Um, we've added some new features to this such as stuff like uh, audio muting um, and a kind of range of uh, UI improvements to make sure that it works really well across different uh, display sizes, screen sizes. And uh, we'll be moving the code for AppRTC to GitHub as well. Um, just wanted to give a shout out to uh, Sylvia Pfeiffer's great blog post uh, which lists the uh, various um, options that we can use with AppRTC and we'll actually be adding that to the demo as well uh, with an options uh, in addition to that uh, stuff like uh, controlling bit rates and so on. So, um, first up, getting back to the main topic, uh, what, uh, you know, what in general is in the pipeline? I just uh, want to start with you, Serge. So, Chrome 34 is, getting, uh, is going to the stable channel this week, and right. that one includes um, a lot of improvements, as usual. Um, I'll, start, I'll focus first on uh, echo cancellation. So, the fixes that we rolled out in previous Chrome uh, releases to Mac and Chrome OS are now reaching uh, Windows and Linux with 34 and what we've done here is that we were doing a, basically an extended filter for the echo cancellation so we should be able to catch even more um, edge cases that the echo canceller did not catch previously um, also on mobile we ca we can now use the hardware echo cancellation of the mobile device if present and we've turned this on for uh, most of the Samsung devices and the Nexus devices that have hardware AC. So for mobile, if you use Chrome for mobile 34, you should be seeing uh, pretty, uh, pretty impactful improvement in echo cancellation. It made a big difference. It did. Um, the other big news we have for 34 is that uh, de developers can now add screencasting to their WebRTC uh, experience. So if you extend your current WebRTC app with an extension, this extension will be able to do uh, to allow for screencasting in uh, in WebRTC. Um, we are doing this because of uh, certain security issues with having to do with casting of a desktop or particular windows uh, on the general web and we're still discussing this as a general I guess in the general WebRTC community on how to do this in the most secure way so this is our first uh, our first release of this um, and companies like Uber Conference and Jitsi have already added this to their to their WebRTC app um, so I, I suggest that you go take a look at those apps if you want to, uh, an idea of how it can work. Um, it's the, uh, the Chrome Choose Desktop Media API. Thank you. Yep. Other quick things. Um, Optin IPv6 support uh, is now available in 34. Uh, Optin DSCP support now available in 34. And Chrome OS devices that have VP8 uh, hardware acceleration um, for uh, okay, we'll now be using this hardware when doing WebRTC calls. So Chrome OS devices that have VP8 um, hardware are usually the ARM-based ones. And for those machines, you'll see a significant improvement in decode speed. 
so that's for 34. Justin, you want to run, you want to give us a, a preview of 35? Yeah, so running right behind 34 is going to be 35, and uh, we've got a whole slate of fixes going into 35. Uh, we've been doing a lot of work around bandwidth estimation. And bandwidth estimation is the kind of magic process where we try to figure out how much capacity you have in your network and send just the right amount of video to fill you know, that capacity that you have. You don't want to go too much or I'll lose packets, don't want to send too little or else you won't get enough video quality. Um, this is a really tricky thing and we've been spending a lot of time trying to optimize this. Looking at cases where we don't do a great job and trying to figure out, well, why didn't we do a great job? And in M35, we're doing a lot better job about making sure that the timing analysis we do is really accurate. And this, this uh, additional work we're doing to make the timing right has translated into much better bandwidth estimations uh, over various types of networks. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other stuff that we're doing, a whole bunch of grungy de details I won't get into right now. But the bottom line is that in M35, you're going to see even better video quality uh, on a better, uh, on a more varied uh, class of networks than ever before. And so we're very excited about that. Um, another thing we're really excited about is we've got a new version of Opus. Opus is the audio codec that uh, is uh, you know, our sort of preferred codec for WebRTC. And it supports uh, sort of full band uh, you know, quality, it supports uh, all sorts of different complexity modes, it supports stereo. Well, in the past, um, what we had was we had really good quality, but there was a high CPU cost, or higher than we really wanted. And especially on mobile, especially in ARM, uh, this actually ended up being a bit of a, a hindrance. And so what we've done is we've uh, integrated the latest stuff from the Opus team. This is Opus 1.1, and with Opus 1.1, we can have this great quality at much lower complexity. And so you're gonna see uh, on, especially on ARM devices, the complexity of using Opus go down by half. So this is a major optimization. So overall, you know, Opus, this, these improvements will happen across the board, You'll see better quality, or you'll see, you know, when using Opus, see lower complexity on both desktop and mobile. But you'll see really, you know, the, the biggest effect would be you can now use Opus without concerns uh, on, on mobile devices. Um, we've also got in 35 uh, a new version of what we call NetEQ, and NetEQ is uh, some kind of the magic stuff we have inside WebRTC for adaptive jitter buffer handling. And uh, I won't get into all the details, but the bottom line is before we did stereo. Um, the NetEQ caused a lot more complexity. And uh, it was because the old version of NetEQ really wasn't tuned for stereo. NetEQ has now been rewritten, made for the future, made for stereo. It can handle stereo much more efficiently. So if you're doing open stereo, you're going to see way better results. So we're very excited about that for M35. Um, just go through a bunch of other minor changes. Uh, turn TLS, the ability to tunnel, turn over um, uh, basically a TLS socket. Uh, we had this previously in WebRTC in previous Chrome releases, but it didn't work properly with, uh, you know, with TLS domains that were identified by a host name, which is pretty much the way you always want to use it. So it wasn't really usable until M35, but we fixed that, we've tested it. Uh, basically, turn UDP, TCP, TLS should work fantastic in Chrome 35. And we've been doing a lot of other polish on reports we've gotten from people saying, uh, you know, my mic didn't work, my webcam didn't work. We've gone through and investigated these issues, made a number of fixes in M35 that just will raise the overall quality of the platform, uh, you know, for your app, and that'll benefit your application. So, yeah, that's Chrome 35. That's fantastic. It, it feels like there's a lot of stuff moving towards a more kind of adaptive, responsive uh, way of doing business. Yeah, I mean, we just, you know, we get these reports, things don't work, we go investigate it, we figure out, hey, here's something we didn't know about, we try to figure out exactly what we need to do in the software to deal with that particular case, we make the adjustments, we roll it out, we see people, like, they're happy with it, and we move on to the next one. And like, this is the way we raise the quality of the platform, you know, just chipping away at, you know, issue by issue, piece by piece, you know, fixing these, th these things. There's no silver bullet, but, uh, you know, we've been really making a number of fixes over the past year or two yeah. that have really made a big difference. So please continue filing bugs, com continue using the Discuss WebRTC list, because that's really where we get um, the, the best feedback and, uh, and help, help us track our progress there. Absolutely. <coughs> so, uh, well, I mean, one of the things I think we've been asked about a lot from developers uh, speaking recently is, is uh, considering iOS and, and video on iOS. Uh, is there any kind of progress update you can give on that? Yeah, so this is, uh, I'm really happy to be able to talk about where we are with iOS. Uh, you know, we're still in a situation where, due to the way that 
you know the requirements are on the iOS landscape that we can't ship a version of Chrome that has you know full WebRTC, WebRTC support built in, and so this makes us kind of sad. But on the, on, we do ship uh, now a version of iOS, uh, basically a Objective C library, you know, with Objective C bindings that basically provides the same WebRTC API that you can compile and make your own iOS app. And in the past, we just had support for audio. We now have full support for video as well. So we're really very close to parity yeah, on our nice. iOS SDK than we were, are with Android, uh, with our own Android SDK and like you know the web. Mm -hmm. So like you know we're not at 100% parity. We still have some work to do to add support for data channels and uh, SCTP. But uh, this is something that we are going to be working on this quarter. You know to basically fill in that last remaining gap on iOS. On the topic of DTLS and SCTP, it's good to mention that these things are now available on Chrome for Android as well. And also the Android uh, standalone SDK. Right. So you can have data channel application working across web and Android and very soon iOS. Awesome. Cool. cool. And I, I know we get uh, a lot of questions also about you know what's happening with the specs, what's happening now, and uh, what's uh, what may be further in the future. Um, a couple of things in particular, uh, thinking about uh, output, uh, you know, device uh, device selection. Right. So now developers will, uh, in the near future, be able to um, add selection of microphone, speaker, and webcam directly into their JavaScript instead of having that managed uh, through Chrome. And so we think that's going to make it a lot easier for for users to be able to change uh, input and output uh, devices. And also, it'll allow web developers to to uh, customize their app, to, to customize that experience to, to their app. So that's something I think uh, a, sm a small thing, but I think it'll have a lot of impact on usability. Yeah, we, we, we got that feedback that developers really want to be able to manage this stuff in their own application, present this yeah. UI themselves yeah. and get that, that control. And uh, the API that exists right now, there's a media stream track dot get uh, get sources. Yeah. And this is actually going to change in a, in the new version of the spec. It's a method on the navigator object called get media devices. Mm -hmm. And whereas get sources only allowed you to enumerate input devices, get media devices will allow you to input or enumerate both input and uh, the audio output device as well. So you can figure out, you know, decide which for a given audio or video tag what device you wanted that to render to mm -hmm. so that you know if you want to have a headset or something yeah. you know toggle quickly between a headset and speaker phone you can do that with just some javascript yeah that's great news makes a lot of sense on the, on the navigator object too i think um the other question of course uh, that uh, people are always asking about is uh, media stream recording oh uh, uh, yeah any any news on that yeah, so uh, it actually ends up being a bit more work than, than yeah. we had expected. Uh, we're doing a lot of the plumbing right now, you know, getting the ability to sort of marshal a media stream track, uh, move it around in the system, and, and do that sort of stuff. Uh, we're getting the, like, a lot of the stuff in place so that, you know, when we actually can turn our attention to media stream recorder, the API, we've got all the guts in place. So uh, right now we're, we're working on that, and we hope to have more to announce the next, in the next update we do. That's great. That's great. And I guess uh, maybe a good place to finish off is just a little consideration of uh, WebRTC 2.0. What is this? What's happening? Yeah, so, yeah, there's a lot of talk about like, you know, where are we with the, the spec, you know, WebRTC 1.0 or C 2.0, where there's this thing, ORTC. Um, you know, basically, you know, we we're trying to finish up WebRTC 1.0, basically get to a very stable baseline of functionality that all developers can say, you know, here's what you can expect across browsers. This is the stuff that's fully documented, you know, in the spec. It fully works. Uh, you know, this is the baseline. You can go off and build these great applications. And we think we're very close to that. At the same time, we kind of want to look to the future and say, well, you know, what, what are, what are the next, where do we want to go in the future? Where, where's the sort of ultimate destination for, for WebRTC? And, uh, you know, trying to do some, maybe some some more advanced things. You know, things like simulcast, uh, layered codecs like SVC. Um, you know, how, how would we express that sort of stuff? Well, we don't really have the right APIs in, in, in 1.0. Yeah. And so in 2.0, we want to have a little more flexibility to be able to do, you know, maybe maybe some different types of scenarios that you know now people are trying to do like way more advanced things. And so. Um, it's still very early days, but there's this uh, community group called ORTC, and yes. ORTC has come up with like a, a preliminary sort of draft specification that gives an idea of uh, you know how to do some of these things like simulcast that you might want to do uh, in the future, and uh, you know 
it's currently, you know, we don't, we don't know if this will sort of make it into an eventual sort of working mm -hmm. group product. You know, we, we're interested in it because it kind of matches a lot of things that we want to do and others, uh, there's a number of other people that are interested. Uh, we've heard that Microsoft, uh, you know, has been sort of looking at, 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 this, at this spec as well. So yeah. like, overall, I think there's a, a lot of community interest, but it's too early to say exactly where this is going to end up. So I, I think that if it's something where you're kind of looking at the future of where web artists might go, it's something to just to take a look at, and I, there'll be a lot more we can report, I think, in our, in our next update. Great, great. great. Okay, so uh, thank you very much, thank Justin you. and Serge. And yes, uh, yeah, join us for next time. And uh, yeah, final plug for uh, the, the new home of WebRTC samples on GitHub. And please, we really appreciate uh, all your issues and additional content and feature requests for those. And uh, yeah, look forward to seeing you uh, for our next uh, WebRTC update sometime in the next couple of months. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Next time. Goodbye.